Mark, welcome to my 2015 Tab Max S trailer, Tic Tac. Um, weather here is getting really, really nasty. Um, time to get out the heavy jackets <laughs> and uh, just putting the finishing touches on um, putting a little Tic Tac here away. I noticed something today um, or the other day that um, I hadn't noticed, but something that needs to be repaired. We go down here this is my seven pin plug and I'm hoping you can see that you see how the plug cable is actually separating from the plug itself and I'm actually getting some some fraying in there and stuff what happened is on our last trip we traveled um, highway 1 in Northern California highway 101 and highway 20 and anyone that's been on that knows that it's like hairpin turn hairpin turn hairpin turn hairpin turn for hours and hours and hours and hours and even though this is pretty flexible as it gets older um it gets the rubber gets stiffer and stiffer and what happened is that this guy was you know swinging sides back and forth you twist and twist and it just worked that loose now, I can cut this and just replace this end, but I don't want to do that because the, the ends that you get, they don't seal well back here. Back here where the, you know, they've got a little clamp and they try to seal, it doesn't seal well at all. And you get water in there and water is the number one reason that these things fail. They get corroded, um, not good. So instead of clipping this off and putting a new plug on, I have, um, through Amazon, purchased a whole new cable. And it's really very easy. I'm, I'm not even certain I'm going to go through the detail. But cable just comes in, curls around, goes there. And it connects underneath here. See if we can see it. Right See if I can get the camera in here. Right there, right in the back here, there's a box. All of that cable comes out, goes into the side of the box, and then you just match wire for wire. Each one of these colors, you just match what it was. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, that's the most permanent solution. And in my bulletproof situation, <laughs> my bulletproof um, methods, I need to do that. Um, rather than just repair this, I need to make it so it won't happen again. This particular cable um, is really nice. It wasn't cheap. Um, and let's go into the house and I'll show you some things that make this, this uh, cable special. Um, not all seven pin connectors are created equal like anything else. Let's go on inside. We'll take a, a minute or two and I'll show you what makes this cable great. Hello Tabbers, back in my office where it's a little warmer. <laughs> it's getting pretty nasty out there. <clears throat> this is the cable that I'm going to replace um, my 7-pin with. Um, you know, mine, I showed you outside. <coughs> Excuse me. Showed you outside how mine is separating there. This one's molded in place, so it should stay pretty well. I talked about not all 7-pin cables and connectors are created equal, and they're not. Um, so we're going to talk about those differences. The first place we want to stop, start at is the wires themselves. 
Now, a good 7-bit conductor will all be copper wires. There's, there's some um, Chinese knockoffs out there that the wires are, um, th they're, they're steel or some other material that's just not, that doesn't conduct electricity as well as copper does. <coughs> that being said, there are two wires in this group. You see, they're all different colors. Two wires in this group that are more important. There are the black and the white leads. Do you see, I'm hoping that this will focus this close. Do you see the difference in size between the white wire and the red wire or the green wire? See how that's a thicker wire, much, um, it's just called a gauge. This is a heavier gauge wire. And the white and the black are important because the, uh, this is, these are the two wires, um, the hot and ground, that actually run the charging current down to your trailer. So when you're trying to run your refrigerator while you're driving, or you're trying to charge your battery while you're driving, that current goes through these wires. So these wires need to be beefy enough to handle that kind of current. The next wire that's important is the blue one. And you can see how it's smaller than the black wire or the white wire, but still bigger than the red wire. See that? We got three sizes there. We got a really beefy black wire, a really beefy white wire, and a medium blue wire. Well, that medium blue wire, that's the wire that's responsible for running your trailer brakes. Again, that's um, quite a bit of current. Not as much as these two guys handle, but still quite a bit of current to run your brakes. That's why they're beefy. Now the rest of these guys, you see that they're just small, thin little wires. And that's okay, because they're just running your LED brake lights, your running lights, your turn signals, and that kind of stuff. So they don't have to be beefy at all. But this is what makes this, this particular um, cable good. One of the things that makes this good is they are copper. Another thing is that the two power cables are beefy. The number three is the blue one is beefy, kind of, and the others are are just normal wire. So you, if you're going to buy a, a cable, um, you, need to, you need to look for these things. The other thing is this. This is the business end. Um, now, you're looking for, in these guys, you're looking for these pins to be copper or brass. Now, I'm kind of torn between the two. You want them to be copper or brass because they're less, um, they conduct electricity pretty well, but they don't rust, that kind of stuff. They'll tarnish a little bit, but you won't have, not like steel, okay, because some of these you're going to get are steel. Now. I'm kind of torn between copper or brass. Copper is a better conductor than brass is, but brass is stiffer so that if you've got a copper connector here and one day you have some problem plugging in or unplugging it, those copper pins, they're actually soft because copper's soft and they can bend. Whereas brass, even though it doesn't conduct as well, um, and it's just a minor, you know, no, I mean, the difference between copper and bass conductivity is not much at all. The, co the brass, like these are, these are brass, are much stiffer, and so they'll hold their shape better than the copper ones will. I'm torn with that. I suppose that since I'm taking off a cable that has copper in it, and I'm putting on one that's brass, I'll be able to tell you in a few years, well, which was better. Now, take a good look at the end of that. I want to show you what what a not so good uh, pin looks like. Do you see? <clears throat> get something to point with here. Do you see in the holes? These are the female ends. See that hole and that hole. You see how there's a pin there, not two. What's going on there is that the male part of the truck. This is the truck, and in this particular type of connector. You've just got one piece of brass, and so it's intended just to slide up against it. Well, that makes okay contact, but not great contact. Now take a look at this. See how there's two sides in there? What's going on with it is this is your male truck part, and this is the female part of this, this pin, and it does this. You see how this has got twice as much connection as this? So this kind of connector works, but not well, because your connection is just half the size of this size kind of connector, which does this. See how that's much better than that, right? I'm actually getting twice as much connection 
in in this in this guy than I would in this guy. So that's the deal. That's what makes this a a good cable, and that's what makes this a not so good cable. So it's basically just I'm going to get into that little box that's under there. You'll see your cable reads, leads down to the box, and you're going to find that each one of these wires is hooked to a different screw, and you're just going to take a picture of it so that you know how it was. You're going to push this in there, put the rubber grommet around it, and tie them all down where it was, just like you saw. Um, it's that simple. It's no big deal, but I need to do that. And like I said, I could just cut the end of this, my bad cable off and put a new one on. But you see how this is molded out of one piece of plastic? That's one piece of rubber so that I won't get water intrusion in there. If I just put a connector on here, they often leak. And I've seen that before where, you know, the back of your truck is all sealed up and nice and tight, but you've got rain and stuff going on in here and salt and all that stuff. It gets in there and eventually corrodes all these connections out. So... Um, that's why I'm decided to replace the entire thing rather than just cut the end off. Um, prices are yeah, a little bit higher to do this, but not bad. So hope you uh, learned something there. If you ever need to replace your 7-pin, you know what to look for. Safe driving, and we'll see you later.